Nine biggest mistakes in the last 10 NBA drafts. Number nine, the Golden State Warriors. In the 2020 draft, the Warriors had the number two pick. Anthony Edwards goes number one. And the Warriors have two amazing options, LaMelo Ball and Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton is good, but LaMelo is on another level. The third Flash Brother. He can play shooting guard, and when Steph goes to the bench, he can move to point guard. The perfect fit for the Warriors. Warriors. But the Warriors do something shocking. They say no. We are drafting James Wiseman because we need a center. What? When you have the number two pick, you draft the best player. Not what position you need. Imagine if in 2003, the Cavaliers said, we already have a small forward. We don't need LeBron. So what happened to James Wiseman? He played terrible. Then he got hurt, missing a whole season. Then he played terrible again, and now he's on the Pistons. And LaMelo Ball, he's averaging 24 points and made an all-star team. He is the future of the Charlotte Hornets. Number eight, the Philadelphia 76ers. In the 2017 draft, the 76ers had the number one overall pick. Joel Embiid was their superstar, but they needed one more star to be a championship contender. Jason Tatum is available. He is the best player in the draft. The other options are Lonzo Ball and Markel Fultz. But the 76ers already have Ben Simmons at point guard. And this is when Simmons was actually good. So they don't need a point guard. Tatum is the perfect fit. Simmons, Tatum, and Embiid. The perfect big three. All they need to do is press the button for Tatum. But no, the 76ers. Sixers say, let's get another point guard. You know what's better than one point guard who can't shoot the ball? Two point guards who can't shoot the ball. And they draft Markel Fultz. Great thinking, Philadelphia. 10 out of 10 intelligence. So what happened? Markel Fultz forgot how to shoot a basketball and is now on Orlando. And Tatum is a top five player in the NBA. An MVP candidate every season, averaging 30. 30 points! How can we trust the process when your process stinks? Number seven, the Denver Nuggets. This one is absolutely insane. It is the 2017 draft and the Nuggets have the 13th pick. They already have Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. One more star and they would be the best team in the NBA. Donovan Mitchell is available. I know what you're thinking. The Nuggets drafted some somebody else, right? Wrong! The Nuggets actually drafted Donovan Mitchell. It's official. They have a big three. Or do they? Out of nowhere, five minutes after drafting Donovan Mitchell, the Nuggets decided to trade him to the Utah Jazz. You couldn't let him play one game, Denver. You only gave him five minutes. In return for Donovan Mitchell, they got Trey Lyles. Donovan Mitchell became a superstar on the Jazz. Their franchise player making three all-star teams in five years and scoring 26 points a game. And Trey Lyles? The Nuggets kept him for two seasons, realized he was awful, and then released him. So they traded Donovan Mitchell for nothing. Number six, Denver Nuggets again? Are you kidding me, Denver? In the 2015 draft, the Nuggets had the number seven pick and they needed a guard. The best guards available are Devin Booker and Terry Rozier. Booker was supposed to be a top five pick. It's a miracle he's still available. He is the obvious choice, but the Nuggets say, no, sir, we don't want a shooting guard. We need a point guard. Okay, fine. So at least they take Terry Rozier, right? He's still pretty good. No, they do the worst thing possible. They say no Booker, no Rozier, and they draft Emmanuel Moutier. Why? Is it because he can make threes? Is it because he's a great passer? No, no, no. They drafted Emmanuel Moutier because he was very 
very fast. I'm about to blow up. They skipped one of the best shooting guards of our generation because Emmanuel Moutier was fast. Emmanuel Moutier was so bad, he made only 36% of his shots. The worst in the entire league. And he was traded to the Knicks. Devin Booker is a three-time All-Star, scoring 28 points per game, and is the best shooting guard in the NBA today. Denver, if I see you again in this video, I'm gonna blow up. Number five. The Philadelphia 76ers. It's the 2020 draft, and the 76ers have the number one pick. There are two stars available, Jalen Brown and Brandon Ingram. Both of them have the ability to turn the 76ers into a super team. All the 76ers need is an elite scorer, and these are the guys you want. And the 76ers draft... Simmons, the Ben Simmons that can't hit a three? The Ben Simmons that shoots 30% from the free throw line? What's wrong with you, Philadelphia? Jalen Brown is the future of the Celtics. Brandon Ingram is the future of the Pelicans. And Ben Simmons is on the net, playing terrible. Congratulations, Philadelphia, for nothing. Number four, the Milwaukee Bucks. It's the 2014 draft. And and Milwaukee has the number two overall pick. Andrew Wiggins goes number one, and Joel Embiid is available. The seven foot college superstar who can make three pointers. The perfect player to build a franchise around. But Milwaukee says we already have a center. We have Zaza Pachulia. Who? This guy? This guy? Why is the reason you don't want Embiid? Please, Milwaukee, think clearly. But Milwaukee said, nope, Joel Embiid is overrated anyways. We have another superstar we want to draft. Is it Zach Levine? Is it at least Julius Randle? No, no, no. The Bucks draft Jabari Parker, one of the biggest busts in NBA history. It makes no sense because Embiid was obviously the better player. Embiid went number three to the 76ers, becoming an MVP. Jabari Parker is not even in the NBA anymore. He's 28 years old, the prime age of an NBA player, and nobody wants him. Moving on to the top three. Number three, Milwaukee Bucks. I don't believe it, and it's in the same draft. What did you do this time, Milwaukee? In the 2014 draft, the Bucks also had the 36th overall pick. Now, they wanted to draft a big man. And guess who's available? Nikola Jokic. The two-time MVP is right there. It's a miracle from the basketball gods that he is still available. Because Jokic was supposed to be a first-round pick. But you won't believe it. Because Jokic was a center, the same position as Zaza Pachulia, the Bucks wanted a power forward instead. And they draft Johnny O'Brien. We could have had Giannis and Jokic on the same team. But instead, we got Johnny O'Brien, who averaged three points per game in his entire career. While he's out of the NBA, Nikola Jokic is winning championships for the Nuggets. This could have been you, Milwaukee! Number two, the Sacramento Kings! Close your eyes, Kings fans, because this is gonna make you sad. In the 2018 draft, the Kings had the number two overall pick. DeAndre Ayton went number one, and there are two superstars available. Trey Young and Luka Doncic. Both of them would transform the Kings into an incredible team. Do they take the European legend or the elite three-point scorer? They take neither of them. They want to draft a power forward. Are you kidding me? Okay, we still have hope because Jaron Jackson Jr. is also available. He's not as good as Luka, but he's still an all-star. Still would be a good pick. But the Kings say no. We are drafting Marvin Bagley. The first five picks of the draft were all-stars except 
except Marvin Bagley. How do you mess this up, Sacramento? Luka Doncic is a top three player in the NBA. Trey Young scores 30 points per game. And Jaron Jackson just won Defensive Player of the Year. And Marvin Bagley? He's not even on the team anymore. He's on the Pistons. The Kings could have had De'Aaron Fox and Luka. They would have been on Unstoppable. Number one. Wait, before number one, honorable mention, the New York Knicks. It is still the 2018 draft. The Knicks have the number nine overall pick, and they are lucky because a player who was supposed to go top five fell down to number nine, and his name is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Another gift from the basketball gods who want to make the Knicks good again. Again. And the Knicks look at this beautiful gift of one of the best point guards in the NBA and they throw it in the trash as they decide to draft Kevin Knox. Why? Shea was the obvious pick. What were you thinking? The Knicks thought Kevin Knox is big and strong. That's why we want to draft him. What? You know who else is big and strong? Boban Marjanovic. And he scores two points per game. That's not how you draft players, New York. Kevin Knox has been on five different teams in five years because every team realizes this guy stinks. Shea Gilgis Alexander, who I guess isn't so big and strong, is scoring 32 points per game. He made the all NBA first team, which means he was the best point guard in the league this season, beating Steph Curry, John Morant, and Damian Lillard. He is the future of Oklahoma. It could have been you, New York, but you just had to mess it up. And number one, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Dallas Mavericks. It is the 2013 draft, and the Mavericks have the number 13 overall pick. They wanted Steven Adams, but the Thunder took him at number 12. No problem, because we have another great big man that you can take. He's pretty good. I mean, his name is only Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh, yeah. A big three of Vince Carter, Giannis, and Dirk Nowitzki. The Mavericks would be a championship team. But what do the Mavericks say? We like people who can shoot, and Giannis can't shoot. What? Are you kidding me? So who do they take instead? The Mavericks draft Kelly Olynyk, the most average player in NBA history, all because he can make threes. So instead of arguably the best player in the NBA today, they took Mr. Six Points Per Game. And guess what? Giannis is winning MVPs and championships with Milwaukee while the Mavericks are missing the playoffs. These are all mistakes that did happen. But what about the opposite? The greatest trades that almost happened. Let's find out.